And I try not to lean on Doug Howler too often to jump on because he's busy. he's got a lot going on. And then I see where there's been a change uh, for him in terms of his focus. It's not just going to be on Arizona State anymore. It's going to be more than that. Doug Howler with The Athletic for a few minutes. Also, when it's right around the 4th of July and you're thinking, eh, there's not much going on. They'll pack 12 media day. All of a sudden, the world just collapses. <laughs> so, cool. So plenty of reason to have him jump on board. It is good to see you. Um, let's just start with change in focus from the athletic with you, no longer just Arizona State. Take it away. Yeah, um, this is something we've been talking about for a while. Uh, I think anyone who knows, uh, who's familiar with my work, knows that in the past, even going back to my days at the Arizona Republic, I you know dipped into different things at different times. But, you know, there's so much going on in the state, Brad, um, you know, with the Cardinals, um, with the Suns, obviously. Um, just thought it was time to maybe stretch out. And, you know, I'll still be involved with Arizona State, you know, cover the big stories that unfold on that on that beat. But it also I'll have an opportunity, you know, to uh, monitor the Suns for a while. Um, you know, obviously the Cardinals, you know, we have somebody Zach Buchanan who covers the Diamondbacks for us. So I won't be doing as much as that. You know, even high school, it's, it's really just about finding the best stories to tell in the state, which, you know, you, you guys have done the similar thing uh, with your outfit for a while as well. So I'm, I'm really excited about it. So college, high school, deep dive, columnist, uh, breaking news, whatever it is you see you want to do. Yeah, when you put it like that, it sounds overwhelming. So, um, but yeah, I mean, the focus will be kind of deep dives. Uh, I feel like that's kind of what I do best. I really like to kind of, you know, dig in and, you know, kind of go past, uh, you know, the surface story. Um, you know, I've done that a lot and I think the, the readers have responded to it. Um, so that, that, that'll be my focus, but, you know, when breaking news happens, if, if, you know, DeAndre Aiden never gets traded, if Kevin Durant ever comes this direction, um, you know, I will definitely be involved in anything like that. So, uh, and, you know, and also I'll, I'll branch out. They still want me to kind of explore national stories as well, uh, which I've done usually, usually in the summer because things typically slow down. Uh, so I'll be doing that as well. On the college end, let's just focus on that on a minute for a minute. So this is not a swipe at ASU. It's just the state has more than one university and mm -hmm. you can't, I think there's stories at NAU that they're not going to get as many views. There's stories at ACU, there's stories at Iowa University. Of course, there's stories at the University of Arizona. So for someone like you to just be primarily, I'd say you've been 90% Arizona State for the last several years, it's yep. just time to branch out because there's so much more out there than just one place here in state. Yeah, it's funny that you mentioned NAU. I have some ideas as far as that goes. Um, and, and Brad, I mean, I'm sure you found out as well. It, it typically, there's so much media these days uh, and a lot of people um, doing similar stories and doing them very well. Sometimes the stories that that resonate most are the stories that, um, you know, are, are, are on the maybe the lesser beats, the lower profile uh, schools, teams, uh, athletes. Um, so I definitely want to try that. You know, down in Tucson and Arizona, um, you know, I think Jed Fish has done some interesting things so far. Uh, I really am interested to see what kind of jump they take this year um, in year two. And also, you know, Arizona basketball starting to get back to where uh, I think people in the state are used to seeing. So, you know, a lot of possibilities. And again, like I said, uh, I'm not ignoring Arizona State. Um, it's an interesting time for that school, as you know, with, with the NCAA investigation and all the um, – if the school refers to it as outside noise. I think that's a little bit inaccurate because the noise is actually coming from inside. But, uh, you know, it, there, there will be plenty to write about there. And I do have some stories that, that have backed up that I've recorded on for a while in Arizona State. So uh, those will be coming out soon here, too. Good for you. Good for you. That sounds like an exciting time. Doug Haller with us at The Athletic. Make sure you subscribe to The Athletic. They do great work there. All right. When you first heard USC UCLA moving, taking off, where were you? And what were your initial outward thoughts? Or you can you not repeat what you said? Well, I was on a podcast with Andy Staples, uh, who was one of our national reporters at The Athletic. And we were talking about, I, I did a few weeks ago, a story on the old Playboy All-America preseason teams, which was a fun story to do. Great work. And yeah, uh, thank you. And so we were talking about that, uh, telling stories about what I unfolded. And then right as we were ending, uh, my phone beeped and Andy's phone beeped at the same time. And we both kind of looked at it and just kind of went, holy, you can imagine what we said next. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Th- by the way, that episode, that that podcast segment has never seen the light of day. Uh, <laughs> it became <laughs> irrelevant just like that. Uh, I knew it as soon as I, we logged off. I'm like, well, that's never going to air anywhere on the show. Um, so, yeah. That, and my first thought was, I mean, it's interesting because everyone says the same thing. Shocking, but I'm not surprised. I mean, those things contradict each other. Um, you know, it just... <sighs> You, you, you think about the alliance that they made last year, which didn't make sense to anyone because there was no written contract and it looks foolish now. Uh, and you, you, your first thought is what's going to happen to the Pac-12? How are they going to survive without the L.A. market, without the without the anchor schools? You know, and we're still we still don't have a firm answer to that uh, right now. But, you know, it's there. I wrote about it today for the athlete. I, there just aren't very many good options for that for that conference right now. Right. No, no, I agree with you on that. It's, it is, I, I, I've been using the line from John Wooden, the great coach, be quick, but don't hurry. Right. Don't, don't just rush into something because, you know, it looks great. And all of a sudden, two weeks later, and the Big 12 just now has a new commissioner who can't even take over to August 1st. So nothing can happen on that front. And it used to be television markets drove it. I think there's still some of that. But, you know, the, the fan interest and fan base in Los Angeles around USC and UCLA has been dwarfed by the pro sports. In the Bay Area, nobody really cares about Stanford and Cal. Um, and that is a market that is huge. Here in Arizona, Arizona State is somewhat relevant to a certain group, but it's more a pro market. They just have not had success in their big sports at all. Nobody can deny that. And so where do you go to try to fill in the blanks? If you say San Diego State jumps in, San Diego State, to me, Doug, and I grew up there, covered them, was their play-by-play guy. It all looks great on the outside. It's a mirage. Um, It it can be with a new stadium over there. Uh, But if you believe that that's going to attract a kid at modern day up in Orange County to drive down the freeway versus the NIL money that that kid's going to get paid at USC or UCLA, you're kidding yourself. No, I I agree with you. You know, there's the whole academic side of it uh, as well. I mean, you know, San Diego State, uh, you know, the, the Pac-12 for a long time, uh, the word snobbish has been is kind of strong, but it might also fit as far as, you know, what they're looking for in, in expansion partners. Um, you know, last year at this time, they, you know, there was a there was some discussion with 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 Big 12 schools, um, you know, and. I, I don't know. I mean, I agree with you, San Diego State. Someone told me that they they would, if San Diego State joined the Pac-12, they'd be another Utah. I'm, I'm not sure I agree with that. Um, I do think that the Pac, what San Diego State has beaten up on Pac-12 schools of both men's basketball and football for a while. But, you know, it's just not something that you would think. It gives the, it gives the Pac-12 a Southern California presence, which I think would be good. But I don't know beyond that if it moves the needle much. I don't know. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, I thought I had a conversation with you several years ago about, the Arizona schools move into the Pac-12 or to the Big 12. Was that you? Yeah, I, I mean, about it. I wrote yeah. about it. It was like it was a while ago, and it was just absurd to me that they were still being placed. Like Arizona, Arizona State was being put opposite of Alabama, Auburn, and on FS1, not even a main yeah. panel, and that they were accepting it, and that they were always being pushed to the the you know while well, we're on Pac-12 after dark. That sounds great to like 800 people that. I don't know. We'll watch football from 6 a.m. until midnight. Maybe with gambling, that would change. But I just felt like if you're better off going to play at Oklahoma State at 11 a.m. on Big Fox for the whole country to see, then you are going to Pullman, Washington. And and I like Pullman, but sitting around in a hotel until 8 o'clock that night just to say we're on ESPNU. And nobody seemed to care over there about that. They were just well, we're with ESPN. It's so great. You don't know what you're talking about. I don't know. It's just common sense. Your other athletic department programs having to go on these places, you've been to Pullman. That's not easy travel in January or February. Right. It's a long flight to get kids home. And if you're flying into, let's say, SMU is one of the teams that comes over here eventually, possibly, you're flying into Dallas. You're flying in, you're flying out. You know, the baseball team is not going to get rained out at Oregon State or not at a big 12 school, maybe they don't have to go to Oregon state and get rained out. So I felt like there's just all sorts of things that were positives. And instead it's no, the PAC 12 network's great. You don't get it. PAC 12 network was great for the, the smaller sports. Yeah. But overall, Doug, come on. Right. No, I agree with that. Um, 
you know, I mean, just from it's been reported and people who have told me it seems like the Pac-12 is going to try to hold or sit together and, and see what happens. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I agree with you that time is on their side, but you know, if I'm in the Arizona schools, I, I would be very cautious of that because you, know, you just don't know what or- Oregon and Washington will do. And I don't know if they want to be put into a situation where, okay, we're united. We're going to stick this out. Oh, wait, uh, those two schools are going to move on. Now, what are we going to do? It just seems like if you have a chance to go join the Big 12, and, and we were having the same conversations about the Big 12 a year ago. You know, Everyone wondered if it were going to survive when Oklahoma and Texas left. It stabilized itself, adding four schools. You know, it, by moving to the Big 12, you get into Texas, the Dallas, the Houston market. That helps. Um, it doesn't offset the loss of LA, but you know, it would help as far as media rights go. Um, to me, the Big 12 seems like their best move at the time. But you know, I I don't know what to make of the ACC partnership or anything like that. That that seems like that seems like a short term fix to me, but. Uh, I think the worst thing that the, the Arizona and Arizona State could do is just sit back and put their faith in the rest of the conference at this point. Totally agree with you. You know, I put it to the Baltimore Colts. The vans are going to sh- show up in the middle of the night and they're going to roll yeah. out of town and we're going to say, what the heck happened? And the word alliance just on its own, I get shivers up my spine. <laughs> And they're not even using alliance to describe this. They're, they're, they're not even using partnership. They're pretty loose in front of partnership. I mean, it's like, how flimsy is this? Um, I, I get it. Uh, it it's, it's all about increasing the value uh, in the eyes of the television companies for both conferences. Both conferences need to uh, need improvement in that area. And, you know, I love the basketball elements of it about, you know, U of A going into Duke and, and North Carolina. Bobby Hurley going back, you know, into Cameron Indoor Stadium is incredible storyline. Um, you know, if it ever gets to that point, I, I just, yeah, I just don't see, to me, it just, like I said, it seems like a short-term fix until the, um, the ACC schools, predominantly, uh, primarily Clemson, Miami, North Carolina, Virginia, figure out how to get out of a grant of, a of rights deal. So the grant of rights deal, if, if I'm looking at that from a distance, lawyers can find a way through anything. One, yeah. two, my understanding is if more than eight schools say we want out, it makes it easier for them to right. get out. That's two. Three, what if you had a, an alliance, John Wilner was talking to me about this, um, that Gonzaga could come into the mix from what he's been hearing. And even though they don't have football, it would be a basketball side of things. So what if it were Gonzaga, Kansas, Duke, North Carolina, Arizona, all in a conference, suddenly you're power three, but in football, you're not, unless Notre Dame got involved, which is the biggest stick in all of this. Um, From a football point of view, I would think that even though ASU and U of A couldn't get over through and around USC or UCLA through all these years, it's a pretty manageable football conference if you had an agreement with them. So do you see a path where the ACC or is it just something to fill time like I'm doing right now with you in the middle of July? Or do you see more to it than that? And we're not filling time, by the way. But No, yeah. To me, it just seems like something worth discussing. Um, it, there's a little bit more shine to it, I think, than some of the other. I mean, I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> how much truth there is to it, but there is a feeling that whenever a move is made, that someone wants to make a splashy, an equally splashy move. Um, I don't know if the Pac-12 has that option here, but that would probably come close, closest to being, you know, something that an attention grabbing move. I mean, certainly uh, it would grab more attention than adding Fresno State and UNLV. Um, So yeah, I I get it. Utah State's been thrown out there to me and like, what is Utah State? What would Utah State and San Diego State really bring other than you're just trying to find travel, making travel easier? What would that mean? It doesn't mean strength, anything. No, strength in numbers, maybe. I don't know. It's not going to increase your value. Um, right. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, if it could work, um, you know, I don't want to hear about welfare student athletes anymore, um, you know, that, that, <laughs> with, the, with the road trips that would be involved. Um, I, I love the idea of, of a possible championship game between the ACC champ and the Pac-12 champ. I mean, there's some intriguing, interesting things about it. To me, it just seems far-fetched. What do you believe is truth in all of this in regards <laughs> to how it went down? Because there's a lot out there that USC was working independent of UCLA on this. That's been out there. Kevin Warren had no idea it was above him. I don't believe that. But what do you believe in your reporting, the people you've talked to? You're at a much higher level than me, but what do you believe is true on that? 
Uh, it won. It's amazing that I think they kept it quiet as long as they did. Um, credit to John Wilder for breaking the story, for being out in front of everybody. But, you know, that was it broke the day that it happened. Um, you know, it, it seems that from what I've heard that you know, it caught everybody by surprise. Um, the one of the good things that Larry Scott did is that, you know, the equal sharing of revenue in the conference so that, you know, USC, you know, being USC, uh, you know, would get the same amount of money as everyone else. And, you know, USC did not find, take that favorably, did not like that, probably would do reason why should USC get the same thing as Oregon State. Um, and it just seemed like uh, a situation where, you know, they, they realized that they could have greater earning power elsewhere. UCLA, it's been pretty well documented that they're running a deficit, uh, millions of dollars in debt. Uh, this was a, a way for them to get out of that. Um, so, I mean, that, that's pretty much along the lines of what people have been telling me. Um, you know, it, it, being caught by surprise is like, like I said, and that, that's getting back to what I was talking about earlier about how the danger of putting your, your trust in what your other conference schools are going to do. I mean, if you haven't learned that lesson by now, I mean, it's a fool me once type thing. Uh, so, you know, I would just, everybody, I think, especially the Arizona schools need to, to need to figure out what's best for them, independent of the conference, try to keep the conference together, but also figure out what's best for them. Doug Haller with us for a couple of minutes at The Athletic. Before I get you out of here, let's dive into Arizona State and Arizona and start with the Sun Devils. What does this move? Because I don't think that they're, they're together in terms of the impact on U of A and ASU, other than they're going to have to move somewhere else, simply because U of A has got a basketball product that's a national brand. Arizona State right now does not. So within the halls at Arizona State's athletic department, what do you believe is the feeling today moving forward or been the last couple of weeks? Uh, concern, <laughs> first and foremost. Uh, you know, I do know, you know, just in the conversation I've had that, you know, they've, I mean, th there's a lot of people thinking about the Big 12, uh, what that would mean. Uh, could they compete? Um, it's, it's not a great time, you know, for, for, for this to happen for Arizona State, given the fact that you mentioned they're not national brands, but not only that, but the football program is under, under investigation, NCAA investigation. Um, you know, there's a lot of smoke around, you know, Herm Edwards and where he is right now. Uh, you know, it's won one division title since 2011 in the Pac-12 South. I mean, it's just not, there's not a lot going for it. Bobby Hurley's uh, basketball program has kind of struggled the last couple of years. So, you know, they're not really operating from a position of strength. Uh, so, you know, that, that's the thing. There's been a lot, a lot of people texting back and forth. And what I have learned, Brad, is that I don't think a lot of people don't know what's going on. I mean, a lot of people don't know for sure. They're just throwing out ideas like a lot of people. Right. But it seems to always, in the conversations that I've had, um, you know, one person told me that's, that's worked in college athletics that, the, that Arizona State needs to do. Michael Crow needs to cash in every favor, um, make every call, do everything possible to try to get into the Big Ten. And I know it doesn't work for, you know, they're not a member of, they're not an AAU school. Big Ten favors AAU schools. Um, but, you know, do whatever's possible just to try to get on their radar, sell the Phoenix market, sell the facility, sell uh, whatever you can to try to get on their radar. It's a Hail Mary, but I think it's worth a shot. But in the conversations I've had, everything usually circles back to the Big 12. Okay, take me to Tucson and the U of A. Where are they at in all of this? Well, U of A is a little bit different. Um, you know, they are an AAU, AAU school. I don't know if that, you know, makes them any more appealing to the Big Ten. Probably not. Um, you know, it, it, it's also not great timing for them. You know, Jen Fish, the, the football program has been among the worst um, at that level for a couple of years. They're building. Uh, and, you know, in the basketball uh, team, even though they went 33-4 and four last year under Tommy uh, Lloyd and had a great – great season you know they're they're facing the ncaa as well and and what uh you know the penalties that uh may have occurred under sean miller so you know there's some uncertainty there the one thing arizona has that everyone knows is you know it's it's a basketball brand. it's a basketball school it could, you could put them in any conference in america whether it's the big 12 i mean arizona kansas that would be you know baylor i mean that those are great basketball schools and they fit in perfectly there you put them in the big 10 they fit in perfectly there you, get, you put them in the acc Oh my gosh, the matchups there. So uh, they have a little bit, I think, more to offer if teams would really want to look at them. Uh, but you know, it's just, you know, you look at the two schools collectively together, and you think you know they're going to make a move together. Um, you know, maybe the best thing they have going for them is the Phoenix market. And you know, at this point, I don't know if that's enough to really get them where they need to go. 
Two other questions. So I've had a lot thrown at me from fans wondering if they could go independent from one another. I would think the Board of Regents would say that can't happen. Yeah, I, I would be I, I would be with you on that. Some people have asked me. Um, it would be really interesting to see if the Big Ten would offer Arizona and not Arizona State. I don't think that would happen at all. That would get really, really interesting. But I, I'm with you. I don't think the Arizona Board of Regents would ever let that happen. Okay, Ray Anderson and Dave Heakey and all this, are they really guys that can move the needle or is this above them where it's the presidents of the two universities? I think it's the presidents. Um, I think it's a, it's above them. Ray Anderson, you know, has, uh, you know, it, it at least worked with Kevin Warren, the, the Big Ten commissioner during the, um, in, during their NFL days, they've crossed paths. So maybe there's, you know, relationships there, but, you know, I, I think it's above them. Um yeah, at the, at the president's at the president's level, the chancellor's level at this point. One scenario I've had run by me is: could the Big Ten flush out some of their bottom feeders, and then go pursue Arizona and Arizona State or some other schools, where they're saying, you know what, we're never going to get where we need to get with this. I'm not even going to list the universities, but there's some universities that do we really need to be associated with this when we can take better schools, better brands at other universities and other conferences? That's, that's an interesting question. And it's really, I think the next question in realignment is, you know, right now it's been all about acquisition. Um, you know, what is it, is it going to come to a point where schools, where conferences look to schools, you can go, you know what, Oregon State, Washington State aren't pulling their weight in our conference or Indiana and Purdue and the Big Ten aren't pulling their weight. Um, you know, it's a little bit interesting, you know, when, when, uh, I mean, all you have to see, all yeah, all you need to know is that the Big Ten expanded to include Rutgers primarily for the New York market. So, I mean, it's not so much what you accomplish uh, on the court or on the playing field or in minor sports or major sports; it's what you can bring as far as eyeballs. So, um, I, I think that's the next step, but potentially, potentially the next step. I don't know if we're close to that point, but it is interesting to consider. Okay, before you and I see each other, Pac-12 Media Day in two weeks. What changes, if anything? I think more of just what we've done over the last 15 minutes, uh, try to figure out where, where the, uh, the pegs fit. Um, I don't know that I'm really, really interested to see what Pac-12 media day is like, because we're going to Los Angeles, uh, UCLA and USC will be there. And it's just going to be, I don't know if awkward's the word, but I mean, it's, it's going to dominate the story. I mean, I, I don't know if anybody's going to be talking too much about, you know, who's going to be starting at left tackle for Cal or Stanford or anything like that. Um, so that'll be interesting, but I, I don't know. I mean, everything seems to be on a holding pattern until Notre Dame figures out what, what's to do. Notre Dame seems to be in no hurry whatsoever. So I think we're just going to be doing a lot more of just trying to figure out, you know, what's best for each conference in each school. That is Doug Haller do it going deep, chopping it up. You can find all of his content at the athletic. Make sure you subscribe to the athletic again. I appreciate your time. Thanks. Thanks, Brad.